Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so this week we are now officially in spring, and spring has sprung all around us. We're going to do a very appropriate springtime painting, also great for Easter, um, of a gorgeous Gerber daisy with a little ladybug on it. Super fun and simple, going to bring you through it every single step of the way as per usual. I'm going to be using my four standard brushes that I use in most classes, so I have my large square wash brush, I have a medium sized pointed brush, and then I have two small detail brushes. Okay, one small and one smaller. I'm gonna get all four of my brushes in my water cup off the side of the screen. The colors that I have to start with today, just for the background step, um, I have some nice bright cobalt blue, a little bit of violet, black and white, and a burnt sienna brown. To see a full materials list of everything that you need, check the description box below and it'll bring you to my website and show you what you need to paint along. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. So we're gonna to start today with our biggest brush and a little bit of water on that brush always helps the paint go nice and smooth. And what we're going to do is create a little bit of like a blue sky background. So I'm gonna bring in just a tiny little pinch of blue into some white with some water in it and very lightly I'm going to start getting that paint all in the canvas texture here so that it soaks into your canvas just like so and we want a little bit of variation so that's pretty light so that's a good kind of initial color to get on there but I might sneak a little bit more of a vibrant blue for a couple brush strokes. Very nice here and there. Just a little bit of a nice clear blue sky with just, you know, some interesting brush strokes in it. And I'm going to bring that almost all the way down, but I'm gonna have my flower a little bit off center, but pretty much taking up the whole center space here. So I don't necessarily need to come all the way down where I know I'm going to have kind of solid flower, but you may have, you know, some peekaboo blue sky between your petals. So might as well bring it pretty much all the way down. All right, and especially there along the sides, but this is a very soft and subtle background a little bit more vibrancy up in this corner, I think. Kind of balance everything out. Okay. It's kind of a play back and forth between the blue and the white. And then once you get it to a place where it looks pretty good, that's uh, pretty good to me. We're gonna go ahead and switch use to my, I'm going to go to my uh, second to smallest small detail brush here, but you could also use your medium brush if you'd like. And I'm going to mix up a dark brown with my burnt sienna and my brown, excuse me, and my black. And then I'm going to do a circle. You can either center it or you can do it a little bit off center. I think I'm going to do mine a little bit off center. You just wanna create a little half circle there, which is going to be the center of our daisy. And I think I might wanna bring that out a little bit further. I always start small, that way it's easy to adjust things. <laughs> it's a little bit uh, harder to make things smaller. Okay. I'm just going to try to be as circular as I can just like so. Okay. We can go ahead and just fill this in right now too. We're just doing the first layer of all of our shapes right now. Okay, and I think I might grab my medium sized brush to go ahead and fill this in. I'm 
gonna go a little bit on the lighter side. And I'm gonna take that brown right along the top part here, blending a little bit. And then as I get down, see how I'm taking all of my brush strokes in that half circle motion. As I work my way down, I'm gonna go a little bit darker in the center. Again, so we had kind of dark on the outside and then dark in the center. We're creating a little bit of depth with this initial layer. Okay, there we go. Perfect, and just blending that together nice and dark and striking perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my second to smallish detail brush again. And I'm gonna start creating my leaf shapes with a gorgeous light purple. I'm gonna go pretty light to start, that way it's easy to adjust if need be. A little bit of water added into my acrylic paint, as always. All right. Now, you don't want to pull too much into your brown. Okay, but this is a first layer, so if that happens a little bit, that's okay. And what I like to do when I'm creating flowers is I like to come to sort of like the, the four corners, but in this case, it would be the three corners here, like northeast, southwest. But we're missing the south with this one, but making it kind of easier for myself to then go in between. Okay, we're just starting with those basic petal shapes, just like so. And then you got to decide I want to do two. I think I'll go ahead and kind of have some gaps here in my flower. And then I'll do another petal right behind. Okay, so we want pretty full flower. You don't wanna have very much space in between your petals. So if you're like me, you're doing somewhat sort of thin petals, you'll probably wanna have these in between petals as well, okay? Just like so, and it's okay if they're a little bit different because everything in nature is you know, a little bit unique and imperfect. Okay, looking good. And you wanna know kind of where each of these petals connects here to our center. So very similar steps to the sunflower painting, um, which is a popular one. But of course we have this gorgeous purple and a little bit of a different center, which we will get to later. Okay, this is looking good. And you want all your petals to end at about the same length. I might need to adjust some of those a little bit. It's kind of what we're doing with this first sort of sketchy step. Okay. Looking good. All right, just a couple more here. I picked up a little bit with my dark brown, but it ended up not hurting me. Okay, just being gentle with my brush strokes. There we go. Nice. Very nice little initial shape there. All right, let's go ahead and grab our medium sized brush to fill in. And we're going to fill this in now, keeping the outermost sketch lines of uh, that beautiful outline that we just created for ourselves. And we are also wanting to bring this all the way into the center and then long brush strokes coming out in the shape of the petal. Very nice. And if you need to use a smaller brush at this point, that is perfectly fine. Go ahead and switch back and forth the more pressure that you push down on a brush, the wider the brush stroke is going to be. So with very light pressure, you can take a brush even like this size that I have now and get a pretty small line with it with very light pressure. Okay, 
Okay, so it's all about what you're comfortable with though. So feel free to downgrade brush sizes if that gives you a little bit more control. Okay, gonna grab a little bit of a darker purple. And while I have the opportunity with my paint being wet, I'm going to add a couple little swipes of color through my petals. And if you go too bold there, you can tone it down a little bit with some of the base color again. And we're gonna have a chance to sort of fine tune all of our petals later. So this is just that first initial step and just creating some really pretty blending while we're filling in. Okay, a little bit of water always. Also to keep your brush twirling in the paint like this, it's gonna have it come to a nicer point as well. Okay, a little bit of variation in there. What a lovely spring painting for a lovely spring day. Just last week here it was snowing and now today it is forecasted to be 85 degrees Fahrenheit, <laughs> which is already too hot for me. I miss the snow already, but I'm sure we'll have some good cold temps still before spring and summer are here with, uh, with all their might. Okay, little bit of variation in there. Very pretty. I find this step very satisfying. I like working with this violet color as well. It is definitely the most time consuming step of today's painting. If you are painting along with me today, I have created a Facebook group called the Art Club, which is designed for my students to share their work. I would love to see your beautiful Gerber daisies with your little bugs uh, or anything else that you're creating. It's a very supportive community with artists of all ages and skill levels free to join this little Facebook group link below in the description box. If you'd like to join us over there, we'd love to have you. All right, and just moving right along here. I think that this painting would look beautiful with another color as well. I loved the purple personally, but I think like a pink or like a light blue would look really pretty. Although with light blue, you may want to change up your sky a little bit. This is one of the few paintings where I did the version beforehand, as I usually do in most of my classes. I usually do a practice painting first. And this practice painting I actually loved first try. No changes. <laughs> so I'm trying to copy it as best as I can today. Um, but I went with purple the first time and I liked it and I've been admiring it all week in my art studio. And hopefully you guys like it too. Let me know what your favorite color is in the comments. You probably like bright colors because that's uh, what this channel is all about. Okay, look at this coming together very nicely. All right. Just like so. Even taking these opportunities to bring the petals out all to the same level, keeping those outside sketch lines, adjusting a little bit as needed always going a little bit smaller to start and then pushing that shape out a little bit as we fill in. Okay. 
feel like it's already so lovely. But the final details that we'll put in the second step today will really just bring it home. All right, and just a few more here. And we are almost at break. We're gonna take a break and let this layer dry and come back. All right. Just like so. So always keeping your brush strokes in the direction of the shape. I kind of went along the circular part there just to fill in, but now I'm coming back over those petals and getting all the brush strokes going that same direction. Every brush stroke matters. Okay, very nice. Look at how pretty our flowers are. You can really see how having a lot of petals, even though it was a tiny bit time consuming, was worth it in the end. Because now we have a nice full flower. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of shadows over here. There's my purple, a little bit darker. Just love that look. All the way there to the center. All right, let's go ahead and let this layer dry. That looks good for now. And we'll come back and add all the final touches. I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and I got some fresh colors on my piece of palette paper here. So I have some black and white and then some nice bright red. This is a cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and a little bit more violet. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break as well. All right, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. I'm going to grab my second to smallest detailed brush here, and I'm gonna be working now back in the petals a little bit. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my purple and a tiny bit of black and a little bit of white as well. And I'm going to make a nice kind of slightly darker tone of purple to come in here and add a little bit of shadows. All right, that's looking perfect. Okay, a little bit darker than the color that we have on our petals right now. And a little bit of water as always. And I'm gonna go right along the edge here of my petals and just sort of clean everything up all right just like so and it doesn't have to be a perfect outline of every petal this is kind of more like a shadow okay so just kind of throwing that paint on there just like so right along the edge very faint little line not very much pressure so you can see how that just really cleans everything up. I think I need a little bit more water here. Okay, right along the edge. Just like so. That's a big petal. We're also going to add a few brush strokes coming here from the base. Just like so, as we work our way across, I like to do sort of a little section at a time. Just like so, look at how nice that looks. Okay. Some of my petals are sort of curved and some are a little bit more pointed and that just kind of adds to the natural feel of the composition. And a couple brush strokes coming up as well. And just working my way across my petals. Looking good. 
you like a little bit more natural of a look, you'll just want to go a little bit closer to that base color. And I kind of like the clean feel of the outlines. So just keep that in mind. I have a course specifically about color theory. It shows you how to create tints and tones, talks about how to blend colors, and provides a lot of great knowledge as a supplement to these courses. So if you would like to learn more about color and blending, go ahead and check that out. It's on Skillshare and Udemy, and I have links below to Color Theory 101 as well. It's looking good here. Okay, you have to decide sort of which petals are in front of which. You don't want to lose those shapes. So in this case, that one's behind there. Few brush strokes up. Looking very nice. Just like so. And just those last few. Okay. Each little shape addressed. Little shadow here at the base. Looks very nice. Great. All right, now I'm gonna take a little bit of red. I'm gonna do something sort of unique. I'm gonna bring in a pinch of purple and a fair amount of water. The water is gonna create a little bit more opacity. And I'm gonna go kind of right where these shadows start to meet the purple sort of leaving a little bit here by the base. I'm gonna take this beautiful red tint and I'm going to add this little color, kind of strip of color all across my petals. And if it's a little bit too strong, you might need to add a little bit more water. You can kind of blend it slightly just like so. Little flicks of the wrist, very light pressure. I started painting when I was just five years old and I distinctly remember the class where they gave us little paint brushes and told us to pretend like we were painting on the back of a bug and we didn't want to squish the bug. So that's how much pressure you need. <laughs> Don't squish the bug, very, very light pressure. Okay, looking good. Now I'm gonna go a tiny touch darker with this beautiful dark purple. It's gonna turn kind of more into a gray and just a little bit more shadow here at the base. or just one more added degree of depth for our petals. Very pretty. And this is the sort of unique parts that make it look more like the daisy. Okay, all the way around just like so. Great, and now just to highlight on our petals, and we will be done with the petals and we'll move on to the center. So highlight, I'm just gonna do real light violet. Just like so. And just a few little highlights in the top part of our petals now. 
just perfectly like so. Very light pressure. Once again, no squish in the bug. All right, just working my way across all the way, every petal, a little bit, maybe one or two brush strokes on each petal. Just like so. Nice. I like to have sort of some bold brush strokes of a little bit of a light color in many of my paintings. I just think it looks nice and crisp and clean. So I'm gonna do a few more brush strokes there. <laughs> All right, let's go into our center here again. We're gonna do something unique again. And I'm going to grab my large square brush, this guy right here. And I'm going to be going in with red. I'm gonna make my red a little bit darker though. Beautiful. All right, and I want to make sure that the paint's in all of my bristles on both sides here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right into my little brown section here. And I'm going to tap with the end of my brush some nice texture. Just like so. Right where sort of the brown meets the black. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush now. I'm gonna do something sort of similar again. Rinsing all the red out of the brush. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white and mostly yellow. And same idea here, we're gonna take now this yellow and tap it in right in between that red and the black. Okay, just kind of fine tuning it a little bit. You want that sort of polony texture is what we're going for there. Lovely. Okay, gonna grab my second to smallest brush again. And real quick, take a little bit of gray, just black and white together. And do a little highlight right in my flower. I think that was a little bit crooked, so I'm going to fix that real quick. Just for a little bit of interest there in the center. It's a little bit too solid. So I just kind of want two little highlights, just like so. All right, and then last little step inside of our center. I'm gonna grab a very light yellow. So yellow and white together. I'm gonna mix it up with the front part of my brush. But then I'm gonna flip it over and use the end of my brush to create some lovely texture right on top of that yellow strip of pollen that I just added with my big brush. It's kind of challenging to make this look like pollen. Just a couple painting steps. But that is the idea here, kind of a stylized layer of the pollen in the center blooming. Okay, just like so, all around, different sizes, adding an interesting texture and shape. Okay, and it's also sort of another chance to make sure that's looking as circular as we can get it. Sort of adjusting and tweaking as need be. All right, looking good. Palm stretch, everyone. I think you know the next step. And that's gonna be that cute little ladybug. I like to do the whole flower first. 
before we add anything on top of it. Okay, so that looks great. And now I'm going to use my very smallest brush to create my little bug. And my bug is gonna go, I think, right there on that petal um, because it's gonna be kind of, you know, up and down still rather than hanging upside down <laughs> or something like that. But you can place your bug really wherever you'd like. And we're gonna be just going in with our very smallest brush and a bright red. All right, and then just right on top of where you want your cutie little bug, you're gonna do a little half circle like so, and you can go ahead and just fill that in with red right now too. Just like so, very delicately with my very tiniest brush, super cute. Okay, rinsing my brush, making sure that I'm not bringing a drip with me. <laughs> Gonna grab some black now. And I'm going to just really quickly outline the outside there of the shape. Just like so. And underneath as well. And then I'm going to have a few very teeny tiny little legs poking out <laughs> on the front and back. And then I'm going to do a little half circle for a head that sort of comes flat on the bottom, so more curved on the top, and then sort of a flat bottom. Super cute. Don't want to go too big. Very nice. And then very, very delicately, I'm going to do two little antenna. From the top of the head. <laughs> Cute. Okay, rinsing my brush. Gonna come in with a little bit of white now. For highlight. Again, making sure I don't have any drips on my brush. And right in the top part of the head, I'm gonna do a little shine mark. His little exoskeleton or her little exoskeleton. Just like so. And a little highlight shell as well. Super cute. You can adjust as need be by adding some more black or red. as needed to sort of refine your shape. And then our final step, we're just going to do some spots. And that's of course how we have our classic recognizable ladybug. Just some cute little spots in the shell, like so. Okay. How cute is that? I think a little tiny shadow where my bug is standing right on the flower. Really subtle. <laughs> we'll look good as well. All right, how cute is that? That is all we have for today's tutorial. So let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see you over in the art club. And I also now have a new special section on the website PaintingTube, which is also a great resource for intermediate and advanced tutorials if you wanna check that out. All right, thank you so much for painting along this week. And until next time, stay creative.